Hey, what's going on everybody? Coming to you live and direct from up north, you know what I'm saying? OG camera boy back again. And it's cold as a motherfucker outside, let me tell you something. I got a bird feed that I put up many, many years ago. And that leaves amazing opportunities for taking pictures of birds, you know what I'm saying? Hey yo, snow bird feeders and cold, you obviously ain't home, son. You on your travels. What camera did you bring? Yo, don't be distracted by the lens. I went with the Nikon Z50. And, and you know, you can see the lens that's on it. That's a new one that I picked up. An affordable kind of like telephoto zoom lens, a long one that I could pair with it and see how it would go, you know what I mean? So I went with this combo, what you think? Mm. What I was interested in was the Nikon 200 to 500, the F mount lens. It's expensive and getting them brand new, there was actually a promotion, oddly enough, around Christmas time, I think it was Black Friday or whatever, there was a promotion, but even on a promoted price, it was still about $1,200 or $1,300 US plus tax and all the rest. So I was hoping to see if I could try and find one for under a grand, but yo, that wasn't happening, no way, man. So that's why the Sigma became very attractive because let me show you this deal here I got. I bought it from Adorama at around you know, Thanksgiving time, that sort of thing, because I knew I was going to be traveling soon thereafter, and I wanted to make sure I got the lens. And so I decided to go with the Sigma, because the Sigma, I paid $899. It's got a longer focal range at 150 to 600 than the Nikon does. From what I understand, though, it's not as sharp as the Nikon is. You know what I'm saying? Optically, it's just not as clean. I'll tell you the truth, it's kind of in some ways exceeded my expectations and in other ways falls short. So it was kind of a mixed review. So let me expand on that a little bit. Hey, you in my shop. Yeah, you are. Primarily, I was thinking about shooting like songbirds and wildlife and stuff like that and picked up this 150 to 600 lens specifically for that. And so when you're dealing with APS-C size sensors, you find that in sort of very dim lighting situations, you're not going to get the type of performance out of it that you would hope to, you know what I'm saying? When the light is good, man, this is a great, great setup. Ain't no question about it. And I had a lot of good success with it, you know what I'm saying? But keep in mind, if you're going to have low lighting conditions, maybe choosing an APS-C if you have the choice for a full frame. And my case was the Z6. And, you know, I know the Z6 is not exactly a wildlife camera, but in those low light situations, I think it would have been advantageous to have the full frame sensor. But anyways, as a second thing about this camera, the focus system. I've been using the subject tracking focus, but it really doesn't track very well. I mean, it doesn't track well for fast moving objects. I mean, it just loses the subject very quickly. I'm going to try it with the subject tracking first so you can see what I mean. So in this situation, I'm seeing some juncos down there. Okay, I'm locked on. I'm going to take some pictures and we're going to see. You see it right away. Goodness gracious. We'll try again. The subject tracking is unreliable in those situations. Let me give an example where subject tracking might be better. Okay, we locked down. Now you see, I'm just going to take a series of shots and he's gone. But we can see that <clears throat> the shots that were taken in this sequence were more or less all in focus because the bird was staying put. So in that situation, you can actually do okay with the subject tracking as long as the subject hardly moves, you know what I'm saying? So I found that single point actually works for me if I can kind of follow the subject more with my hands and use single point, that's more accurate. We are a single point and we got a cardinal there, so this will be nice. But that's with single point, and I think with single point, that's going to look real nice. In some cases, probably better, because with single point, I could put that point right on the eye. I do find that sometimes I do come across a picture where the detail is just tremendous. I'm telling you, man, the glass on this lens is pretty terrific, you know what I'm saying? Like, you can get some really, really nice sharp images. So the lesson here, in my opinion, and from my experience, is that single point is better than tracking. Every scenario is different, you know what I mean? So it depends. So if you're looking at birds that are just kind of like sitting in a tree or something like that, and they're being calm for a second, you can afford to like try and even manual focus that, you know what I'm saying? So can I help you? Is there something going on here? What's this about now? Please, I'm trying to do something here, you know what I'm saying? <sighs> totally lost my train of thought. I have no idea what the hell I was saying. All right, my notes, I can't see my notes. <laughs> right on my notes, thank you very much. All right, then. Another thing I want to talk about, this Z50, what I really like about it is the functionality and the usability and the ergonomics of it. Man, it's designed oh, just right. It just feels perfect in the hand. Uh, the only button I struggle with every so often is the ISO button. I accidentally press the record button instead of ISO. And the other thing too I find is the sensitivity of the back screen and the electronic viewfinder, the switching in between them. I find it too sensitive. I mean to say if I'm doing a shot like this, for example, I'm trying to record some video, it'll black my screen out because it went to the electronic viewfinder. But I don't think it should do that. So I find myself oftentimes toggling the automatic switch to monitor only. 
and then I just put it right back to automatic when I'm doing photography or whatever. And I like the ZFC's beautiful looking camera and everything like that. Don't get me wrong, the retro styling is gorgeous, but I prefer this style. I prefer having that grip like a DSLR. It just handles better. You know, especially when you put on a big lens like that 150 to uh, 600, which is a heavy lens, you know, you find that it's good to have a grip like this. In some cases, you can actually even grip it with one hand in certain emergency situations. I wouldn't recommend it, but it's doable. Now, if you had the ZFC in that situation holding with one hand, I don't know. I'd be afraid, man, because there's not much to hold on to on that flat surface. Isn't that beautiful? Look at that beautiful grip like that. Mm. Hey, the proof is in the pudding because you know what I'm saying we want to talk about is this a good camera look at the results that you get man the quality is just beautiful I find you know it is very likely and very possible to get excellent looking images the detail is fantastic and that's what I was talking about before with where this lens surprised me this lens surprised me actually in how detailed the images came out I was very pleasantly surprised about how sharp the images looked I mean you could see every feather you know what I mean you could see like all the different delineations of the colors of the feathers you know what I'm saying from the belly to the back and all the rest but it does that throughout most of the range i would say obviously it gets a little softer and i'm talking about the 150 to 600 it does get a little softer closer to 600 but you know around 500 in my opinion from my experience has been like a sweet spot if you can get the right light around 500 you know what i'm saying then yo you can get yourself a nice sharp image man provided everything worked out with the correct shutter speed and everything else i just wanted to show you something else these are the lenses that i brought with me given the limited space i had so i brought the 150 to 600 i got this 12 to 24 this is an f4 this is an old uh f mount lens and my favorite lens man as it's turning out this 51.8 s lens the z lens Wow, is it a beautiful lens, man. Let me tell you something, shooting video for the uh, Z50 is fantastic. That's another reason why I grabbed the Z50, because I wanted to shoot some video, man. And I'm telling you, this camera is underrated on the video side. It does a very, very good, clean, beautiful job, you know. But paired with this, uh, you know, 50 millimeter 1.8S, oh my goodness, the video comes out so nice, man. I mean, this, is, this lens is just incredible. I think it's the sharpest and the most beautifully optical lens that I own. Or I should say most optically beautiful lens that I own. And so I brought that, and of course the 16 to 50 is good for filming video and that stuff too. That's why I brought it, mostly for video work. But yeah, so yeah, that's what I brought with me, no doubt, you know what I'm saying? But my 150 to 600, I mean, that's an interesting lens because I think given the circumstance of how much my budget was, this lens fell right into that category with the best value from what I could tell, you know what I'm saying? So anyways, more about the 150 to 600. It's coming down at a decent clip. Now, to tell you the truth, I really, really want it to come outside. If I had a gun to my head, do I think the combination of the Z50 and the uh, 150 to 600 would be weather resistant enough for this weather? Probably. At the same time, I don't really want to take that chance, to tell you the truth. So, I got a spot that I can shoot from indoors and we could just test it out. First things first, though, you know what I'm saying? I got to clean up this here bird fever. Let me check the situation, what's going on. Alright, so now the bird feeder is going to do its thing, going to attract some nice songbirds, and we're going to take some nice pictures. Okay, so I got a little homie here, he's a stray I found in this weather. I feel so bad for them, man. I feed him every day, and I see him sitting right there. I'm going to bring him some warm water. Hopefully, I'll have a drink of this here, and he'll feel better. Alright, I'm going to leave him alone. Okay, Sigma 150 to 600 Contemporary. I will say this, I'm going to get it out of the way right from the start. I do not regret purchasing it. I love it very much and I've gotten used to using it. First of all, you'll see right on the side here, this is a very handy little thing. It's got a lock switch. So you have that lock button so you unlock it and now you free to extend the lens. You know, so. Here on the side you have focus functions. I usually switch from just autofocus to manual focus. And here you have, as far as like the distances are concerned, you could narrow the focus range. And then you have optical stabilization levels and that's just worked beautifully. The stabilization is actually really good on this lens. And the custom stuff I haven't done anything with because I bought this lens and traveled, so. This little homie's so goddamn cute, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna give him a little bit of extra food. This is the third time I'm giving him food today. You see him in the tree there? It's gonna be right here, little homeboy. It's all good, my man, it's all good. We homies. Don't worry, little homies. I'm gonna get you some food every day. You gonna make it. And if you want, you come inside, 
we figure something out, you know what I'm saying? God, I love that little homie, man. Tell your boy, break your heart. It really break your heart to stray situation, man. All right, let me tell you about three things that I wasn't too crazy about with this lens. The first, we have to address it, man. It's the elephant in the room, the focus system, you know what I'm saying? All right, first, let me say this. I chose to be taking pictures of songbirds. Songbirds are one of the most difficult things to try and shoot as far as trying to get good images of because they very twitchy and they fast. For a fast moving object, the focus system that combines the Z50 with this 150 to 600 is less than stellar. With this one, you gotta work for it, you know what I'm saying? And you're gonna be disappointed a lot because a lot of stuff's gonna be out of focus. But when you get that beautiful shot, man, it's very rewarding, very rewarding indeed. All right, another thing I'm not crazy about this lens is this focal ring. It's not as smooth as I would have liked it to have been, but I don't know if that's also a factor of the, the weight of the, of the glass itself, you know what I'm saying? I do wish it had full weather sealing. Now, I know that there is a sport version of this lens. This is a contemporary. And that one's, I guess, more for pros and is totally weather sealed. You know, you could practically go underwater with it. The point is, is that you get a lot of value in this version, the contemporary, but it would have been nice if I guess if I felt I had a little bit more confidence in the weather sealing so I could take it out on days like this. On the other side of things, I'm gonna tell you what I like about this top of the list image quality, man. Like the thing is with the Nikon 200 to 500 that I really wanted, that one that apparently has amazing quality as far as the image reproduction, colors, detail, all that sort of thing. So I didn't really know what to expect when I got the Sigma. I mean, I'd seen some sample images and stuff like that, but you never know what you're gonna get until you hook it up to what you have as far as your camera's concerned. But let me tell you something, take a look at some of this, man. I already showed you some, but the image quality is ridiculous, man. I I'm very, very, very pleased with it. I mean, I think it has unbelievable optics. I mean, I think it does excellent image reproduction. I think it, the colors are great. I mean, I just, I have no complaints, like chromatic aberration, none. And that brings me to the second thing that I really love about it is that I bought this because I thought it was tremendous value. And let me tell you something, I was really right about that. This is tremendous, tremendous value. It's kind of hard to look in the other direction considering the price difference. Now, first, let me tell you something. The set that I got from Adorama came with two filters, a polarizer and a UV filter. So they're very expensive, good quality filters. Came with that as a throw-in. Also came with like a cleaning uh, kit and it came with the dock. So I mean, like I said, I can connect this to the computer. I'm gonna try that maybe when I get back home. All that for $8.99, I mean, that's crazy, man. You match it up against the fact that the Nikon 200 to 500 used, I mean, that was brand new too. Used, I can't find a Nikon for less than 1100 in the condition that I wanted. For me, it was a no-brainer, man. And I don't regret it one bit. I think it has tremendous tremendous value. I think this is probably one of the best value purchases on the market, you know what I'm saying, right now for any camera system if you're looking at telephoto zoom lenses. The ergonomics and the usability, especially combining with the beautiful ergonomics of the Z50, makes this whole setup just a joy to shoot with. You know, I used to have a D7500 which had that 3D tracking. I wish this camera had it. Nikon, if you could firmware this shit up, you know what I'm saying, put it back into this camera. That was an excellent photography tracking system. Anyways, the point is, is that if you match this with a higher performing autofocus camera, you know what I'm saying? This lens is fantastic. Yo, so long story short, man, I don't regret buying it, not one bit. It really makes me want to try the 200 to 500 Nikon if I can get my hands on it at some point. And to be honest with you, I'd really, really love to try that lens. The Z50, what do I think of the Z50? Well, once again, man, I'm gonna tell you, it's dope. I love that camera, man. I just think it's super high value. It's an excellent performance sensor, you know what I'm saying? It's tried and true off the D500, the D7500. They all share the same sensor. And yo, it was amazing then, it's amazing today, you know what I'm saying? And the Z50, I'm very pleased with, man, from the photography to the video side. Like I said, the video side is amazing too. Thanks for tuning in in my up north edition, you know what I'm saying? And yo, man, I'll see y'all next time. Peace.